So welcome back everybody, let us begin with a silent prayer. at this far, uh, we saw basically uh, this pattern here about these different types of pieces, or types of piece rather, different types of piece in the different types of trouble, okay? Okay. So, and we saw that there come up always these false prophets, and they bring down fire from heaven, try to deceive the very elect. And in the last presentation, we also looked at this uh, pattern here in our time, and we basically saw that our test is this servant by test, and we looked at this decree. Yes, there was already a servant by mandate issued in Austria. It's now taken back. It's paused. What I want to show you now that we can be sure it will come back. Okay. And we obviously need to understand what the Lord requires of us in order to prepare for what is coming. Okay, so let's go now to this first quote in our notes. And there's Sister White, she gives an outlook of how the earth will look like at the end of the world. Okay, she says, in the last scenes of this earth's history, War will rage. There will be pestilence, plague, and famine. The waters of the deep will overflow their boundaries. Property and life will be destroyed by fire and flood. This should show us that the souls for whom Christ died should be fitting up for the mansions Christ has gone to prepare for them. Okay, so yeah, the world will not become more pleasant in the future. It will only grow worse and worse, okay? But it says here, this should actually give us an incentive to make sure that we fit ourselves up for the heavenly mansions, because there only peace will be. Okay, let's go now to this next quote. We looked at this already in the last presentation. It's about the two world wars, okay? And it says here, I was shown the inhabitants of the earth in the utmost confusion. War, bloodshed, privation, want, famine, and pestilence were br brought in the land. Okay, so we saw the pestilence, COVID. We saw, we see also war going on, for instance, in Ukraine. Okay, but I w what I want to now point out more is this topic about the famine. Okay, because here we see the First World War, there was famine. But also, in the next paragraph, in the Second World War, it says, My attention was then called from the scene. There seemed to be a little time of peace. Once more the inhabitants of the earth were presented before me, and again, everything was in the utmost confusion. Strife, war and bloodshed, with famine and pestilence raged everywhere. Okay, so here we have all these calamities mentioned. And this is obviously taken from Matthew 24, if we quickly turn in our Bibles to Matthew 24.
And so, um, let's read verse 6 and 7. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Okay, so Christ warns not only against wars and these things and pestilences, but also against famines. Yes? Okay. Now let's go in our notes again to the next quote. And we read this already earlier. And it's speaking about the Sunday Law Decree. And she says here, to secure popularity and patronage, legislators will yield to the demand for a Sunday Law. Next paragraph. By the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy, in violation of the law of God, our nation will disconnect itself fully from righteousness. Okay, we saw this is this unrighteous decree that will bring all these calamities. Okay. Next uh, paragraph. It says, as the approach of the Roman armies was a sign to the disciples for the impending destruction of Jerusalem, so may this apostasy, the Sunday law, be a sign to us that the limit of God's forbearance is reached and that the measure of our nation's iniquity is full and that the angel of mercy is about to take a flight never to return. <coughs> okay, so here she compares the Sunday law with which ancient story? Yeah. Rather, the surrounding of Jerusalem. Yes? So she says, as the Roman armies were a sign for the impending destruction, so will this apostasy be also a warning to us. So, and what was the sign that Christ gave them to flee? Cestius, right? So, we already mentioned this earlier. Cestius illustrates the Sunday Law decree. So, cities get surrounded. But it also says now in the next quote, it says, It is no time now for God's people to be fixing their affections or laying up their treasure in the world. The time is not far distant when, like the early disciples, we shall be forced to seek a refuge in desolate and solitary places. As the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was the signal for flight to the Judean Christians, so the assumption of power on the part of our nation in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. So again, she compares Cestius with the Sunday law, right? Yes. And then she says, it will then be time to leave the large cities preparatory to leaving the smaller ones for retired homes in secluded places on the mountains. Okay, so when Cestius comes, it is this sign to flee, right? Okay, to flee from Jerusalem. And we saw Jerusalem on one hand, it's an illustration of the cities, yes? Okay, so you need to flee out of the cities. Now let's continue. Let's go to the historical account when Cessius came. It says, when the idolatrous standards of the Romans should be set up in the holy ground, which extended some furlongs outside the city, or city walls, then the followers of Christ were to find safety in flight. When the warning sign should be seen, those who would escape must make no delay. Throughout the land of Judea, as well as in Jerusalem itself, the signal for flight must be immediately obeyed. Okay, as soon as you see the sign, you must immediately obey. Okay, and then it says in the last sentence, they must not hesitate a moment, lest they be involved in the general destruction. Okay, but what was the case back then when Cestius came? Could they literally immediately flee? No, right? As long as Cestius was there, they were basically caved in, right? They could not just flee like this. And this is now what is uh, referred to in the next quote from GC. It says here, the besieged despairing of successful resistance were on the point of surrender when the Roman general 
withdrew his forces without the least apparent reason. But God's merciful providence was directing events for the good of his own people. The promised sign had been given to the waiting Christians, and now an opportunity was offered for all who would to obey the Savior's warning. <clears throat> so Cestius had to flee away, and then they could obey the warning. Events were so overruled that neither Jews nor Romans should hinder the flight of the Christians. Upon the retreat of Cestius, the Jews, sailing from Jerusalem, pursued after his retiring army. And then jump down to the last sentence. Without delay, they fled to a place of safety, the city of Pella in the land of Perea beyond Jordan. Okay, and in the next bit, it's just, there's a space missing, okay. It's from 4SP 32.1. Just read, read the last bold faced. It says here, without a moment's delay, they fled to a place of safety, the refuge city Pella in the land of Perea beyond Jordan. Okay, so when we look at this, Cestius comes here and surrounds, and as long as he's there, he, you cannot flee, right? But what did we already see? Is this the white? Compare Cestius to what? Sunday. To the decree, right? To the Sunday law decree. Therefore, where is the first time that this decree will be taken away? The counter decree, right? Okay, so the counter decree is the decree that will now basically give you the opportunity to haste away. Okay? Because so Cestius is now hastening away. And where must he flee? To the refuge city. Okay? And it says without delay. Okay. And what is the refuge city? Let's go to this next quote from Patriarchs and Prophets. And it says here, the cities of refuge were so distributed as to be within a half day's journey of every part of the land. The roads leading to them were always to be kept in good repair. All along the way, signposts were to be erected bearing the word refuge in plain, bold characters, that the fleeing one might not be delayed for a moment. So, I think the majority of us is familiar with the, these refuge cities. Who was to find refuge in there? All those who unintentionally murdered somebody, right? Okay, so now let's continue. Let's jump over, jump to the next paragraph. It says the city, cities of refuge appointed for God's ancient people. It says the ref, uh, cities of refuge appointed for God's ancient people were a symbol of the refuge provided in Christ. The same merciful Savior who appointed those temporal cities of refuge has by the shedding of his own blood provided for the transgressors of God's law a sure retreat into which they may flee for safety from the second death. Okay, so these refuge cities, what are they illustrating? They're illustrating the refuge in Christ. Okay, so, okay, next paragraph. He who fled to the city of refuge could make no delay. Family and employment were left behind. There was no time to say farewell to loved ones. His life was at stake and every other interest must be sacrificed to the one purpose, to reach the place of safety. Weariness was forgotten. Difficulties were unheeded. The fugitive dared not for one moment slacken his pace until he was within the walls of the city. Okay, so here we have the same thought, right? You must flee immediately and make no delay. And, <clears throat> and the Lord used this, this literal illustration because who was hot on your heel? The avenger of blood, right? Okay, so, and literally, yeah, when you think back to this time back then, uh, just imagine you were, you were working or whatever and you killed somebody unintentionally. 
Okay, and this white says, everybody who was in this situation, he fled immediately, right? And for our natural mind, I think everybody can agree you would have done the same, yes? You would not have said, all right, I will go and finish first this business or that thing, or I just need to first get my university degree or I have to first do this and this, okay? So, therefore, what does it say here? When we understand these things in a natural aspect, why are we so slow understanding it in a spiritual aspect, okay? So, the, because who is the true avenger of blood? Satan, right? But we cannot see Satan, literally, yes? But he is right there, waiting his moment to destroy us. And the only way we can find refuge is by being in the refuge city, right, in Christ. Okay, so, because it says here in the last uh, paragraph, the sinner is exposed to eternal death until he finds a hiding place in Christ. And as loitering and carelessness might rob the fugitive of his only chance for life, so delays and indifference may prove the ruin of the soul. Satan, the great adversary, is on the track of every transgressor of God's holy law. And he who is not sensible of his danger and does not earnestly seek shelter in the eternal refuge will fall a prey to the destroyer. Okay, so when we look at our time here, what will soon come upon us? This, this test, right? Yes. Okay, so, and Satan, he will be hot on our heels. So we saw basically that we have the same illustration, the same pattern, okay. Zestius comes here, and with a counter decree, what will he do? Yeah, are the governments still surrounding the cities? I mean, at the moment, yeah. I mean, at the moment, we have one more illustration of it, right? Where do we see this at the moment? Shanghai. Shanghai. Okay. Okay. So, but basically, with this, this counter decree, okay, which is illustrating that Cessius hates the way, this should now tell us we should also flee out of the cities, right? Okay, so now look, let's look at this, okay? Because what can we expect? What will come back? Yeah. This decree will come back, right? The destroyer will come back, okay? And we see this when we go now to Jeremiah 37. Let's go there. Jump over these last portions. Jeremiah 37, beginning in verse 1. And this is obviously also ta talking about the Sunday law crisis, okay? But again, we can take principles of it and apply it to our time, okay? It says here in verse 1. And King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Benaiah, the son of Jehoiakim. <laughs> whom Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he, nor his servants, nor the people of the land did hearken unto the words of the Lord, which he spake by the prophet Jeremiah. And Zedekiah, the king of uh, kings, sent Jehuqal, the son of Shelemiah, and Sephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now unto the Lord our God for us. Okay, so Zedekiah was the last king of Israel, right, just before Jerusalem got destroyed. And now it says here in verse 4, he wants to inquire now of Jeremiah, yes? It says in verse 4, now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Okay, so where was Jeremiah not? He was not yet in prison, okay? And we looked at this pattern, here it is, right, that he will cast into prison. 
Yes? Okay, therefore, he must be before the midnight cry. Yes? Okay. So, now let's continue. Verse 5. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt. And when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. Okay, so who was besieging Jerusalem? The Chaldeans, uh, which is the same as Cestius, yes? It's the king of the north, now besieging Jerusalem. But who came then up to help them? Egypt, right? And therefore now the Chaldeans hasted away. And it's the same illustration as Cestius hastening away. Okay? So, therefore this is then this time of peace and when this counter decree comes. Okay, now let's continue what happens. And what, what did they have to do when Cestius hasted away? They had to flee immediately, yes? Okay, let's see what Jeremiah does. Um, jump down to verse 11. It says, And it came to pass that when the army of the Chaldeans was broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, then Jeremiah went out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin, to separate himself thence in the midst of the people. So what did he do? He fled from Jerusalem. Okay? Immediately. Yes? And now verse 13. And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the ward was there, whose name was Elijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. So what is he now charged with? What is he charged with? Yeah, with treason, right? They say, Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. Yes? Okay. So, yeah, when you flee in the time of peace, when is it that you are now getting falsely accused? What happens, for instance, with Joseph? When was he falsely accused? It was here that daily you know, she tried to deceive him, right? But then here he was falsely accused, and where, where was he cast into? Prison. The prison. Yes. Okay. Okay. Maybe let's just wait until the thing is closed. I hope that this will help. Yes, it helps. Praise God. Okay, good. Now let's continue in verse 14. It says, when he was now charged with treason, it says, Then said Jeremiah, It is false. I fall not away to the Chaldeans. But he hearkened not to him. So Elijah took Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. So he's now delivered up before the kings, right before the state power. And then it says in verse 15, Wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah, and smote him, and put him in prison, in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. Okay? So, therefore we can see, he's now right here, yes? He's delivered up before the princes, and he get them cast into Present. Okay. Therefore, beforehand, in the time of peace, when the Chaldeans hasted away, he was now able to flee Jerusalem. Yes? Okay. So, in the time of peace, we need to, therefore, immediately take the opportunity to flee from Jerusalem. And we need to flee to Christ. Yes? Okay. So, Now let's go up again to Jeremiah 37, because what is Jeremiah telling them? Let's go to verse 6. 
In verse 6 it says, because when they fled away, they came now and inquired of him. In verse 6 it says, Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me, Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. And the Chaldeans shall come again and fight against the city, and take it, and burn it with fire. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. Okay, so he's already telling them, they will come back, right? Okay. So, and this is what we also then must expect, okay, that they will come back, okay? So this vaccination mandate that caused them to haste away, it will surely come back, okay? Yes. Good. Now let's continue. Let's jump down to the next heading, three sieges. Everybody there from yes. Prophets and Kings? Yes. Okay, it says, Within a few short years, the king of Babylon was to be used as the instrument of God's wrath upon impenitent Judah. Again and again, Jerusalem was to be invested and entered by the besieging armies of Nebuchadnezzar. Company after company, at first only a few, but later on thousands and ten thousands were to be kept captive to the land of Shinar. They are to dwell in enforced exile. Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, Zedekiah. All these Jewish kings were in turn to become vessels to the Babylonian ruler and all in turn were to rebel. Okay, it says here again and again Jerusalem was to be besieged by the armies of Nebuchadnezzar and then she mentions these three kings. Yeah? So how, how many sieges were there? Three. three. Okay, first Jehoiakim, then Jehoiachin and then Zedekiah. Okay, and the siege of Jehoiakim, what did it begin? The 70 years of captivity, right? And the 70 years of captivity, Sister White is paralleling with the 12 6. So it's an illustration of the Sunday Law crisis, right? Okay, so in the Sunday Law crisis, so the first siege begins here, yes? 70 years captivity begins. But we see they haste away and they will come back, right? So you have a second siege. But what do you have here again? Again a time of peace, they will haste away. And they will again come. Okay, three sieges. Yes? And the third siege, what was it? it was the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay? Alright, so Therefore, the Lord is telling us, yeah, get ready, because what, re what did we read in the last um, uh, presentation? For what purpose is the time of peace given? Yeah, to prepare for the tempest, right? Okay, and you will only endure the tempest when you're in the refuge city. Okay, now let's go to... Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Okay, because who is Christ? Christ is the word of God, right? Okay. And what does Sister White say? There are many precious truths in God's word, but what does the flock need now? Present truth. Okay. So let's go to 2 Peter 1 verse 12. It says here, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Okay. So what, where do we need to get established in? In the present truth. Okay? And this is exactly what needs to happen to us. Yeah, we need to flee to Christ 
make sure that we are establishing the present truth because and when we come to this way mark here what do we see what will come up See, false, false prophets. Okay. So here we will also have false prophet, prophets coming up. And these false prophets, okay, maybe let's turn to Matthew 24. I know what. Matthew 24, verse 9 to 11. Matthew 24, verse 9 to 11, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Yeah, right here at the midnight cry, this way mark, you get delivered up, illustrating for us this way mark. Yes? Okay. So, and then it says, And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive very few. No, shall deceive many, okay? And actually it's not funny, okay? Because the problem is, we will be the ones that will be deceived, okay? If we are not in Christ, okay? So, and it says here, in verse 10, And then shall many be offended, okay? Why? Let's go to Mark, uh, sorry, Matthew 13. Matthew 13. In the parable of the sower, yeah, he sowed on four different grounds, right? But now let's read here in verse 20 to 21. Matthew 13, 20 to 21, it says, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. So it speaks about the stony ground hearers here. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth, because of the word, by and by he is offended. Okay, so who is offended? The stony ground hearer. Okay, why? He was not established in the present truth, right? Okay. So, and then what came upon him? What made him to be offended? Persecution, okay. Tribulation and persecution. Let's go to Luke 21. Luke 21, verse 12. It says, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and do what? Persecute. Persecute you. Delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons. And being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Yes? So right here, which is see if us, persecution will be. You, you brought it to before kings, before these authorities, and you put into prison if you remain faithful. So, and therefore many will be offended. Now you can tell me why many of us will be offended at this way, Mark. Yes, because they didn't use this time to flee into the refuge city. Okay, they did not obey immediately to make sure to use every moment in this time of peace to become established in the truth. Because I noticed this in myself, okay? Satan was tempting me, you know, before I, before the, this, this, all these, uh, basically the scenario arose that the time of peace would come, I already had in my mind, ah, yeah, when the time of peace comes, I can take maybe a few days off, okay, and relax a little bit, okay? so. But then I realized how foolish this is, okay? And this is exactly what the Lord wants to show us. The time of peace is not a time to lay back, put a gear down, you know, and relax. No. It's a time where the Lord will give us enough grace to make sure that we can be re refreshed spiritually, but that we can 
make sure that we are establishing the doctrine. Okay. Yes, amen. Exactly. Yeah. That, and the chapter in Desire of Ages called, it's, uh, it's called Come Rest a While. Okay. Christ takes his disciples to himself, and they basically get a like a rest. But Christ teaches them one on one. Yes. In the time of peace, what is in the time of peace always provided? Yeah, you can travel around freely again, okay, in order that you can establish everybody in the present truth. Okay? Good. Yes, exactly. Okay. And that's exactly what we need to do. Hezekiah, this is what he did, right? He knew that Sennacherib would one day come before his gates. And therefore, what did he do? Yeah, he, he built up his army, he built up all his defenses if, as good as possible, right? And this is exactly what we need to do. What are our defenses? The word of God, God right? The truth and the truth alone. So we know that the test is just before us and we must make use of every day to become established in the present truth. But what is always the problem with the time of peace? Instead of seeking and fleeing to the refuge city, God's people do exactly the opposite, right? They forget God, go back more into the world, take upon them worldly cares and sorrows, and prepare themselves to be slain by the avenger of blood that is hot on their heels, okay? Because this is exactly what will happen. Because what did we see? When you take this serpent bite, what happens to you? Yeah, you, you basically are now part of s Satan's army, right? So, and this is what we need to understand. Even though you might not die immediately, okay, you made a choice, and now Satan is your ruler, okay? So, and therefore these things are very serious. They, this is our test. We need to understand this, okay? And <clears throat> Okay, many will be offended of us. You need to make sure that it's not you. Okay? And you can also, by your own good example, make sure that you will basically help your fellow brethren in your surroundings to look at your example and to follow it. Okay? But if you give them a bad example, you will draw them also away from Christ. Okay? So we can be either an influence for good or for evil. Okay. So here we can see the import, importance for us uh, to, to flee to the refuge city immediately. Let's make use of every opportunity that is available for you and make yourselves opportunities. Okay? And, but also we have the literal aspect of it. Yeah, because fleeing from Jerusalem also means flee from the cities to the country. Right? Okay, so, and why do we need to flee also out of these literal cities? Let's go to Ezekiel 17, verses 15 to 16. And this is also where Christ borrowed from when he spoke about it in Matthew 24. It says here in Ezekiel 7, verse 15 to 16, The sword is without and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the, in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains, like doves of the valley, all of them mourning everyone for his iniquity. So what does the Bible say? What, what will happen in the cities? There will be famines, okay? So, do we see, for instance, at the moment in Ukraine, let's say, okay? What is happening with all these cities? They're flattered, right? They're being destroyed. And what is with people that are still in those cities, for instance, in Mar Mariupol? They are under famine, yes? Okay, so, but, why are they in a famine? Yes, because they are surrounded. Okay? 
So, not only war makes cities to be surrounded. This is what we realized or experienced in the COVID crisis, yes? So also pestilence will cause cities being locked down and shut, being shut off from the outer world, right? Or shut up. You say shut off or shut off? Or shut off. Okay. Okay. So because it goes on to say, uh, let's go to Jeremiah 14, verse 18. It says, if I go forth into the field, then behold, the slain with a sword. And if I enter into the city, then behold, them that are sick with famine. Ye both the prophet and the priest go about in a, into a land that they know not. Okay, so here also we can see famine in the city. Yes? And I think you, Brother Chris, when you pointed it out, I forgot to mention it. In Ezekiel it said it was not only famine, but what else was in the city? Pestilence. Okay. And did we experience this also in this COVID pandemic? That there were these great outbreaks of COVID inside the cities? Yes, right? That's why they locked them out. And I mean, we, for instance, we live outside in a village. For us, for instance, this COVID pandemic, not much changed, okay? We could kind of live our normal, regular life as much as possible, okay? But in the cities, it's totally different. Yeah, and there are many, many things changed. Now, let's go to Leviticus 26. Here we can just see the principle of it, okay? Let's go down to verse 25 and 26. It says, And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. So in the cities, when you're gathered in the cities, what comes upon you? Pestilence. Okay. And then what else? Verse 26. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake you your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. Okay? So, again we see in the city there's famine and pestilence. And what could we see in the destruction of Jerusalem, the literal destruction of Jerusalem? They ate their children. Yes? Okay, and this is always what will happen when there's re a real famine in the cities. Okay, eventually, yeah, man wants to survive, yes, and you will even go to this length, eating your own children. That's a terrible thought, but this did take place in the past and it will repeat. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 4. Jump down to verse 8 to 10, because this speaks about the destruction of Jerusalem. It says, Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. It, be it has become like a stick. And so the skin cleaveth to their bones. They that be slain with a sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. Now to starve to death must be a terrible death, right? Verse 10. The hands of the pitiful woman have sodden their own children. They were the meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Okay. So, therefore we can see yeah, that the Lord, he gives us clearly this illustration yeah, that we need to come out of these cities. Yeah, we may need to make sure that we are also in the literal aspect in the refuge city that is on the country. Okay? Because there, these famines that will come in the cities will not touch us. Okay? Okay. And I want to share with you this, this little clip here. I showed this already in, in a class for those that 
watch the class know this clip, but still, I want to show this. For those that didn't watch it. Because this is now the lockdown in Ch uh, Shanghai, okay? And I hope that this is loud enough here. China's biggest... I don't know if you can see well. Okay, just tell me. Is it good like this? Can you see something? Yes. Okay. Okay, then try to listen. China's biggest city, Shanghai, remains eerily empty. 26 million people under a massive COVID lockdown. Relying on government deliveries and anger is soaring. Social media showing videos of protests over food and medicine. A supermarket ransacked. At a building where residents have been locked down for two weeks, they shout, we only want supplies. Why are you beating people? At night, the echoes of people crying out from their windows for help. With the Omicron variant surging here, China is tightening its strict zero COVID rules to contain what is now the country's worst outbreak ever. Tens of thousands of asymptomatic people being corralled into mass quarantine centers. In some cases, children have been separated from their parents, triggering public outcry. American Josh Vaughn got swept up in the dragnet. He's trying to keep his business going from a hospital. This, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Two years into the pandemic, there is no easing up on zero COVID here. Robots patrol some streets, reminding people to wear masks. Here in Beijing, even when there's one case, an entire neighborhood is blocked off. You can see the deliveries are passed through a window. In Shanghai, drones tell people to stay home. Control your soul's desire for freedom, it says, as more cities double down with restrictions. The economy is taking it. So, okay. This is pretty tough, right? What is already possible today, what they do, okay? So they can shut down a 26 million population in the city, okay? 26 million, it's bigger than Nairobi. Okay, they shut it down, zero COVID rule, okay? So they, nobody's on the streets, and, and they basically don't allow them to even go to the supermarkets. Okay. So the military must supply them with all the necessary food. Okay, but the problem is uh, people have to order it, you know, they have to order, say, here I need this and this. But the older people, they don't know really how to use the, the cell phone. And if they are alone, they starve to death. Okay. So it's really terrible. And you can see they have all this technology, drones and whatever. You know. And in Brother Mark and I, when we were at the airport in Addis Ababa, and when we made, made a stop, yeah, then we saw these Chinese people coming up also, yeah, and they were all covered in these kind of suits that you could see here, and these white medical suits, masks, um, goggles, yeah, and all these things, yeah, hand shoes, and they were totally wrapped up Either they were coming directly from China, you know, from these quarantine regions, or they were just afraid of COVID, I don't know, okay? So, but they were like a real attraction there. So, but I want to show you this second video. Because there's no new thing under the sun, okay? 
Because what does Sister White say about officials in Shanghai are pleading with Britain? What does Sister White say about uh, the destruction of Jerusalem? Why was there at the second time when Rome came and destroyed them? Why was there such a great famine in the city? Because yeah, there, there was internal war, right? And the the rich people they basically stole all the food of the the poor ones, okay? And she said a massive amount of food also got wasted with this, okay? So when you see now this video, also from Shanghai, just a recent one, you can see that they are basically purposely destroying food. You know, there was massive food donations from other parts of China and they just destroy it, okay? They don't give it to the people. Officials in Shanghai are pleading with residents to get on board for more mass testing to stop the spread of COVID. But people are fed up with the city's stringent measures after nearly three weeks of lockdown. Chinese officials vowing that all positive COVID-19 cases and close contacts will go to government-designated quarantine sites right here in Shanghai without exception. Now, the comments come as the community or societal spread of the virus is expected to end soon. That does not mean this is all over. In fact, it could be far from over. Instead, it means they aim for cases to only be detected inside the isolation facilities. As the lockdown for millions of China's financial hub continues, videos online show senior citizens in Shanghai, some in their 90s, being transferred to government-designated quarantine centers. One patient in a warehouse turned quarantine center told CNN that he saw a group of elderly patients, some in wheelchairs, being transported from a nursing home after they tested positive. There's also been an uproar over yeah, online videos one. that appear to show perfectly good vegetables donated to Shanghai being dumped. Now the government says the vegetables rotted during transportation and the donor recalled them. But the videos show workers dumping hundreds of boxes of vegetables into garbage cans, and in one video, you can actually hear a worker say, all of them are still fresh, and now they're dumped in such a pit. Meantime, getting food here, along with some of the medical care that folks need, it's been a real challenge. Many Shanghai residents have been experiencing food shortages and difficulties buying food during the weeks of lockdown. Social media videos and posts also show donations couldn't reach people's neighborhoods due to logistical obstacles. Meantime, Shanghai plans to launch another mass PCR testing to screen most of the residents here on Wednesday. And they're going to continue the daily testing for those living in buildings that have reported positive cases over the next three days or so. Okay, so now we can see uh, that these things, uh, they will not only come in Shanghai, okay, they will come in many other cities. So and that's their evil and wicked agenda. Okay? And they will use all these things uh, to basically will put pressure upon people to get vaccinate, vaccinated or a certain bite. Okay? And obviously uh, to bring more and more control upon people. I mean, uh, he, you here in Africa, uh, brother told me you're, you're more disorganized, you know, they cannot trace you so easily here. And this might be true, but we all have this, right? And our lives get more and more dependent on it. Uh, you guys use in PESA and whatever, okay? It's an easy tool uh, just to track you and to somehow bind you to this system, okay? So, don't worry, they will find a way to also get to you. So, therefore, we need to make sure, you know, what the Bible says, we need to make sure that we flee to Christ, make sure that we get established in the present truth, and at the same time, those that are still in the cities, that we find a place of refuge outside in the country, okay? That we can then be not among those that get locked into it locked in these cities, okay? Amen? Okay, so, and therefore, yeah, these things are present truth, and we need to understand that this is now our chance to get the preparation done, that we can stand this test. Okay, good, I think that was the main point, but maybe one last thing I want to share with you. Uh, go back to your notes. 
and just go to the very last port. And then before we read it, okay, it's actually already there. Romans 8.35. Because this is a promise uh, given to us by God. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Okay, so famine cannot separate us from the love of God, it says here. However, when only can the Lord fulfill his promises to us? What must we do? We must obey His will, right? And when we follow His will, then He's faithful and He will uphold us. And here's Sister White, she now comments on this, because Paul says, There shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword separate us from the love of Christ? And she says here, she takes up now, or persecution. No, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sake, righteousness sake. For there's the kingdom of heaven. Or famine, no. For we have God's promise. In famine, he shall be redeemed. Uh, sorry, sorry, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. In fleeing unto Jesus, we shall be fully satisfied. Okay? So we must flee unto Jesus, both spiritually, by understanding the message, as well as physically, by coming out of the cities. Okay. And then the promise is given to us that famine will not separate us from the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. Okay. Good. Then I would say, and we can close, and we can also close the Sabbath because it's now over. But I would suggest that we close with a prayer round. And um, what do we have uh, still a QA and A session this evening? Do you want one? You know, open. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Then let's close with a prayer round. Then I would say, um, Brother Lawrence, you can begin, please. Then Brother Peter. Then Sister Stella. Okay. Brother Kelvin. One of you two girls. You. You. You both can also pray and I will close, okay? All right, then let's do this. Dear Father in heaven, I also want to thank you for the Sabbath day and for the time we could spend together, especially in your word. And Lord, we still have many things to learn, but you already have shown us many things. And we thank you for these instructions from your word that give us direction and show us what is to come and therefore help us to take heed to your warnings and admonitions, help us to flee to Christ, to make sure that we establish in this present truth and that we can then stand when we get persecuted and um, you know, delivered up and these false prophets will come and offer us an easy way out by a false message. Help us then to stand and to make sure that we can uh, fight for the faith or contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints and also for those that are still in the cities please provide for them the way out help them to see and understand where you want them to be outside of these cities that you would open a door for them and that you give them the measure of faith to go forward and please provide for them Lord and I also want to ask you for uh, this new week that you would keep us and bless us and tomorrow and on the last day of the seminar that you would pour your double blessing upon us as it is the finish and we need every measure of grace in order to stand in the times that are ahead of us. And we thank you that you are more than ready to answer these prayers to help us in our frailty and to keep back the dark and evil angels that only want to draw us away from you. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy, and please grant us now a good night's rest and a refreshing sleep. And we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.